What's going on smart people? I moved for grad school in less than a month. Needless to say, I'm feeling a little nostalgic today, so I want to talk about my top two least favorite and top two favorite courses that I've taken throughout undergrad. At the end of the video, I'm going to talk a bit about what courses I'm looking forward to and I'm not so looking forward to in grad school. So let's get started. I'm going to kick things off with least favorite and in no particular order, the first one that I'm going to talk about is modern physics. Now your university might call it something different, but effectively it's just serving as a first exposure to relativity and quantum mechanics as well as a brief introduction to specialized fields in physics. Sounds awesome. But when you pack that much material into one semester, the arguments started to get a little hand wavy. And frankly, I found it a little underwhelming. It just felt like one of the less rigorous courses that I've taken in undergrad. Like, we would dance around definitions of things like the metric tensor, and uh, I don't know that it needed to be that kind of course. One thing to consider though is that it's one of the last courses that physics minors have to take, so they don't have to take courses like quantum mechanics or electrodynamics, I don't think. So from that perspective, I can understand why they might want to give them one final exposure. Here's e &M, here's quantum, here's all this other stuff that we didn't get to. But then, it just seems kind of useless for someone who might be track A. By the way, track A is research track at ODU. I think if there were two modern physics courses, one for the physics minors and one for the physics majors, and made the physics major one a bit more in detail, I would have gotten a lot more out of that, and that might have been one of my favorite courses, but that's probably a little unrealistic. On to the second least favorite course. If you've been watching my videos for a while, this is probably the most anticipated least favorite course of Andrew Dotson of 2018, and it is experimental physics. In this course, we conducted famous experiments throughout history, and for me, there was just this huge disconnect between me and the results. It just seemed like it was me, some machine I knew nothing about, and then some measurements that the machine just magically made. And when things go wrong, it's like, well, is it my fault? Is it that there's faulty hardware? Is our sample contaminated? Is it something? There's so many things that could be causing measurements to go wrong. And that's when I really learned that I like my mistakes to be my own and for them to be on paper. So really, I can thank that course for showing me that I really enjoy theory more. And maybe I'm wrong, but I really, I'm not convinced that there were students in the class that really, at a fundamental level, knew how everything worked inside, like the logic inside of these measuring devices by the end of the semester. I think it, it just takes longer than a semester to get this stuff down. But you talk to an actual experimental physicist, I've talked to an experimental physicist, I swear, this guy, you could send him into the forest with a shoelace and a Pez dispenser and he could build a particle accelerator. Now let's talk about my top two favorite courses, and the first of which is computational physics. Physics. Computational physics, you learn how to write codes to solve physics problems. Now whether it's just because some problems are too hard to solve on paper or sometimes you might solve an equation and then someone says, yeah, but what if this is this and that is that, and then you have to go through the algebra again, coding is just such a useful skill to have to be able to speed up any calculations you need to do. Sometimes the first calculation can take just as much time as if you were to just do it on paper, but then you have the code, then it's there, then you can just plug stuff in and it'll do the work for you. Developing a set of computational tools can help take your analytic limits, the limits of what you're able to do on paper, and push it even further. So I hold a lot of value in the skills I took away from computational physics, and it was just, it was a fun course too. Now last but not least, probably my favorite course that I've taken in undergrad has got to be electrodynamics. And I'm kind of cheating a little bit here because for me that was a two semester course, but each of those semesters I took away something different from it. The first semester is where I started to learn to think like an actual physics major instead of blindly brute forcing my way through the multivariable calculus that comes along with Maxwell's equations. I learned how to look for symmetries and I learned how to ask myself what do I expect to happen. Second semester of e &M, it had relativity in it. Some of those things that you see on the popular science TV shows, you actually start to learn about the time dilation, length contraction. You learn that the magnetic field is just the product of your reference frame. So maybe it's not a satisfying answer, but e 2 just had math in all the right places and definitely plenty of relativity, which I thought was awesome. And I think I lucked out a bit because I think the, the students that took e 2 the semester after me, they spent much less time on relativity than we did, so. <laughs> But that's it for my top two favorite and top two least favorite courses that I took in undergrad. Now moving on to grad school, just want to talk a bit about what I'm looking forward to taking, at least in the first year or two before you start getting into specialized courses. Uh, the first of which that I'm really looking forward to is classical mechanics because I haven't had a course in classical mechanics in over three years and when I took classical mechanics, it was just a one part course. It wasn't two semesters. So I think taking that in grad school, it'll be a nice change of pace. It'll be something I haven't done in a while. 
and I'm looking forward to it. I'm also really excited for mathematical methods of physics because I didn't really get much out of my version of that class in undergrad because I took it before I was really up for it. Uh, I hadn't really taken very many math classes or physics classes at the time, so it'll be nice to revisit that subject more in depth now that I've developed my, my chops mathematically. Now there's not really any courses in grad school that I'm not looking forward to per se, but there is one that I'm more anxious to take, and that's e &M, just because I've heard absolute horror stories about Jackson, the Jackson book. I've heard it's just one big conglomerate of, it's trivial to see that but it's not really that trivial. And I was absolutely spoiled with the Griffiths book for using that for e because it's just so easy to read. It's, it's easy to understand. I think it's written really well. So it'll be weird to tackle the same subject more in depth using a book that is apparently is more difficult to read. I don't really know what to expect for the Jackson book. I have it downloaded. I've skimmed through it a little bit. It doesn't look that bad. Uh, but I, I have the PDF version so you can't really control F so I haven't looked through it that in depth. If you're a grad student and you watch these videos, what is it about Jackson? Why is that such an intimidating or a rite of passage to work through for grad school? But anyways, that sums it up for this video. Feel free to let me know in the comments section what your favorite physics classes or least favorite physics classes have been and I'll see you guys there.